peace. Welcome to Holistic Intuition, where we collectively explore health, raised consciousness, and overall holistic experiences such as self-love, cultural privilege, confidence, sex, friendships, oppressive systems, and much, much more, while encouraging you to be your best guide in this human experience through helping each other connect more deeply with ourselves. Peace, y'all. I hope everyone is having a wonderful, fulfilling day. Thank you for joining me on episode three of Holistic Intuition. This episode, I am just so excited to get into because, you know, all of these things that I talk about are a part of me and they're all important. They're all um, things that help me connect deeper within myself. But this specific episode is very important to me because I have just learned so much about myself through food. And this is what this episode is going to be on. It's going to be on food and specifically um, what being alkaline vegan is because that's the lifestyle I primarily live by. Um, a little bit on my journey and just I would say like a preliminary introduction to what healthy eating is, what healthy habits are, just an introduction to food because we could really go on and on and on and all the different layers that are food, you know, understanding what is health, what is natural versus man-made, how the government plays a role in our conditioning, how culture plays a role, um, how the medical system is so interconnected with the food industry we could go on for days and days and I, at the root of this specific episode is I come in contact with people every day that are really not fulfilled completely and they are going through pain and whether that be physical pain um, like all of these diseases that we think are normal such as arthritis, such as cancer, bloating, constipation. These are very abnormal, and these are things that we shouldn't be experiencing at all. So if these are things that are normal, um, which they are for most people, if it's normal for you, my intention for this is for people to live the most healthy, pain-free life they can. And we have been such... We have been so brainwashed to think that part of aging is more pain. And you hear a lot of older people inherit inherit those narratives. Like, oh, you know, once you get my age, you'll see. Your knees will hurt and this will ache and this won't work anymore. And it's like, bro, don't put that shit on me because it won't happen to me. Because all the things that people around my age are going through, I'm not going through. And there's a lot of reasons behind that, but food is the root of everything. Okay, and we're going to get into that, but let's start off with setting our intention. Um, setting an intention is just so important like I always say, because it helps to lay down the path of what you're looking for, what you desire. And once you set a clear intention, after that you're able to fully reflect and go back and see, were, were my needs met? Were my desires met? And if not, how can I go about that? So let's get into it. Take this time to make sure that your being is fulfilled from this video that you're watching or if you're listening it to it um, on audio. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to start with is that anytime I discuss food, health, anything of that nature, um, I'm met with a lot of defensiveness right off the bat. And 
that's to be expected really because of how our government, our schools, our television programs, everything has manipulated us into thinking that we need to eat a certain way. We need to have an abundance of protein. We need to have milk for strong bones. We need to have all these different stories, which are lies, literally lies, that they have made us believe so hard that even if I just bring in a different perspective, it's like, what do you mean? I'm already healthy, or I, I feel fine eating meat. I feel fine eating this. Oh, well this just runs in my family. I'm met with all of these different things that show me that that person is not open-minded. So if that feels like that could possibly be you, that talking about food is something that brings up a defense, I ask, I would ask yourself, why is that coming up? Because we should not allow the conditioning that has been placed on us to act as a barrier between the life that we know we deserve. And on that other side, that life is health, it's vitality, it's pain-free living. And that is our birthright. I will not allow a separate entity that wants to make money off of me control that. And I don't want that for you either. So that's number one, okay, is let's, let's not feed into their, their bullshit, really. Like, uh, let's just call it what it is, okay? It's bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. And the more you learn, the more you see that, damn, I knew layer one of the bullshit. I didn't even know it went down to layer fucking ten. Okay, so I'm just going to get into the top layers right now. And if this interests you, then hopefully that acts as a catalyst for you to get to those lower layers. So let's get into it. You know, first of all, what I said is that, you know, conditioning and health is really a lot of unlearning. You know, that's the first step is releasing these things that have been brought to us. And that can be through, I said, like I said, it can be government, it can be your school, but it can also be culture, you know, it can be family. And that can be hard to release. You know, a lot of these foods that are tied to people's cultures are extremely unhealthy. Okay, like if we look at soul food, for example, soul food is full of dead animal parts, cancer, um, pus, dye, hormones, all this other shit that our bodies are not meant to ingest or digest. And if we look at the root of why black people were given those foods, then why are we still eating those ways? And that goes for every culture. If you're eating an abundance of rice, like in the Asian culture, Rice is full of micro bits of plastic. If you're Hispanic and you're eating heavy rice and beans, you're putting a lot of stress and inflammation in your digestive system. So before you latch on to these identities, like, well, this is my culture, so I need to eat this. You don't have to give up anything. All you have to do is find substitutions. So for example, maybe you love fried chicken. That texture, you can get that same texture, that same taste from fried mushrooms, specifically fried oyster mushrooms. So don't think about it as, oh fuck, I gotta give up this shit. No, I'm inviting vitality into my life and creativity by finding new ways to implement plants into my live it because I'm not gonna use the word diet the word die is in it, okay? Let's be very intentional with the vocabulary that we choose. So, to start off, I just wanna start with like a few basic things so that um, it's not too confusing when I get down, down the line. But one thing is, one word that's very important to know is carcinogen or carcinogenic, okay? That means that that is a cancer-causing agent. So an example of that are um, dead animal parts. So if you're eating, you know, beef, chicken, pig, things like that, you are eating a level one carcinogen. What that means is level one is the worst level. So meat 
is in the same category as cigarettes. I want that to really like puncture you, okay? Because most people in our in this time are understanding that cigarettes are harmful. They have nicotine, they have tar, they have all these things and it's most likely going to lead to cancer. But when it comes to eating, which is linked to emotions, which is linked to comfort, which is linked to lifestyle, family, routine, then for some reason we push that thought away. Well, it could cause cancer, but I don't need it that much. Well, I've been eating it my whole life and nothing's happened. Well, my grandpa did this for 50 years and nothing happened. So what does that mean? That you're not going to invite a better more fulfilling, healthier experience in your life because that horrible thing didn't occur? You feel what I'm saying? So, like I said, meat is a level one carcinogen. So, one other thing I wanna say is that many people have the complete wrong information when it comes to our physiology. So if you look at a chicken, for example, they have two stomachs. If you look at a lion, they have a much more complex digestive system than us. So when you look at these different animals, they were designed to eat certain ways. So let's go back to the lion example. Lions have extremely sharp teeth, much sharper than that of a human, so that they can tear through the flesh of their food. Okay, they have much more complex digestive systems to digest all of that acid, all of that, you know, raw meat that we don't have. So nothing really about our physiology is in line with being a um, carnivore or even a omnivore. Okay, what we really are most designed for is to be a frugivore. Hopefully I said that right. I think it's frugivore, which is basically a predominantly fruit living. Okay, now I'm not completely on that path right now, but I am, you know, definitely incorporating that more, and I'll get more into that later. But glucose and fructose are the compounds that are in sugar, that make up sugar. Okay, so if you study our body, you know that fructose drives all of these modalities in our body. For example, sperm, the main um, energy source for mobility for sperm is fructose. So if you're not getting enough fruit in your livid, your body is really not moving how it needs to be moving, okay? So another example is dairy. Dairy is also linked to cause cancer. Breast cancer, it's heavily rate linked to an abundance of um, female reproductive issues. Fibroids are so common and they are a direct reflection of your diet. And the things you have to remember is people will say things like, well, what if I have my own farm? What if you know, I'm not killing them inhumanely and I'm not feeding them all these hormones. Okay, is that better? I guess, a li like what, a little bit? Yes, but you are still putting something in your body that was not designed for us, okay? Like, I'm not gonna put a battery in my body because that doesn't make sense. My body is not made to ingest a battery. It is not made to ingest dead animals. It is not made to ingest the milk of another species. Not only is that just so fucking weird that we are the only species that passed um, being a baby toddler area, era, era timeline, whatever word I'm looking for, beyond that, that um, period of time, we are the only species that continues to consume milk. And at that, it's from another animal. That sounds crazy. Imagine a full-grown adult cow going up 
and getting milk from a woman, a human woman. We would think like, what the f like that is like like what the fuck is going on? Ima like ima imagine that visual, okay? And now just reverse it because that's what we do to animals. That is so abnormal, okay? But we have been so conditioned to think that milk is there for strong bones, but it actually weakens your bones. And higher consumption of dairy is linked to osteoporosis, which is a weakening of the bones. But why is that that they told us that? Because all of these dairy factories and all of these big dairy corporations knew that the consumption of milk was going down around the 60s and 70s. So they went to the government, they lobbied, they gave the government millions of dollars so that they could legally go in our schools and teach us about the motherfucking food pyramid and show us Got Milk campaigns from athletes, from musicians, from your motherfucking mama. Everybody was on a Got Milk campaign. Do you think that, that was no, there was no reason behind that? There is always a reason behind everything. It is calculated. So the government knows what is, what is in the milk. They know how it's affecting us. But they, their pockets are full. And then take it a step further. You get sick. You have a symptom of your dis-ease, like cancer. Then you go to the hospital. Then they get fed monetarily through that pathway. This is all connected. Every single thing is connected, okay? Once you, un and that's just one layer. I'm just telling you one little thing about dairy. That's for every food-like item that they put in the grocery store that's FDA approved. Okay, that just like bother, it's just like, ugh, the more I talk about it, it's just like, I can't believe that they're allowed to put this shit in our food that's illegal in other countries. For example, red dye 40 is illegal in Europe. It is linked to chromosomal defects. It is linked to reproductive issues. Who's eating the majority of red dye 40? Two to five year olds. Because what do they do? They put it in the cereal. They put it in the candy. They put it in every fucking thing. In your gum, in your pastries but they are legally allowed to do that. That is some bullshit. I am never going to give my birthright away of being a healthy human and trust them? Fuck no, fuck no. So let's get into my journey because that will, I feel like I, the best teacher is experience. So your experience is going to be your best teacher and my experience is my best teacher. So maybe I can just help you understand the insurmountable level of change that occurs in your mental and physical body when you start ingesting foods that are actually made for your organism to survive and thrive. So in about 2018, I went plant-based. Okay, I don't like to use the word vegan. I used to, but vegan has a lot of things that are not aligned with me, and I don't put identity. I don't like to put these identities on things like this is it. I'm vegan. No. Okay, I was plant based, so I wasn't eating any animal products. Anything that comes from an animal, I was not eating. So. Some people plant-based may mean they're 50% plant-based. I was 100% plant-based. So no meat, no dairy, no honey, nothing that was coming from an animal. But I was still eating a lot of processed vegan foods like Beyond Meat, which is horrible for you. Um, like processed vegan cheeses, like all this other bullshit, frozen food. You know, I was eating soy, a lot of tofu, which is horrible for you. Soy depletes your nutrients. And if you look at people that eat a lot of soy, they look paler because it's literally sucking the vitality out of you. Um, and 
I was eating, I was just eating a lot of things that were prioritizing convenience over my health. So, you know, there is no reason why we should be using a microwave. There is no reason. But I was buying microwavable food from Trader Joe's because Trader Joe's is marketed as healthy, like Whole Foods. Now, if you really go into Trader Joe's, there's really not shit you can eat in there. The fruit and vegetables are rarely organic. All of the processed things that look interesting are full of preservatives, citric acid, which is derived from black mold, which is in almost everything. I can't even find hummus at Trader Joe's that isn't full with at least one ingredient that should not be ingested in our human body. But we think that Trader Joe's and Whole Foods are healthy. No, they're marketed as healthy. It is a marketing tactic. Do not let them persuade you. Do your own research. Anytime you pick something up at the store, if it is not a fruit or vegetable, you should be looking at the ingredients on the back. The front is for entertainment. The back is for education. Go check out Surviving Vegan on Instagram. That's where I got that, um, that line from. I love that line. It's facts. It, it is like, bro, you can't even say that shit in a more simpler way. That is facts. So 2018, I was plant-based. I, I lost a lot of waste because what I learned over time is that it is not fat. It is waste. And most of us are holding on to pounds and pounds of excess waste in our colon that has not been properly eliminated. So it's not like, oh, I'm just fat. No, I've just been eating dis-ease that has no way of elimination, so it's being stored in my body. And that storage is causing inflammation. So if you look at, back at pictures of me, and I'm gonna, li I'm gonna link that TikTok of my transformation TikTok, which is more importantly was the internal transformation, but just so you can see the physical transformation, it's pretty huge compared to now versus then. And you'll see how much inflammation I lost in my face, in my whole body, you know? And yeah, okay, I lost my train of thought. So, I went plant-based, I lost a lot of waste, but there was still waste on me because I was still eating processed foods, I wasn't drinking enough water, I was eating too late, but most importantly, my relationship with food was not healthy. And that's one thing is like, you can make all these healthy choices. Oh, I'll eat an apple instead, I'll eat this instead, but what really needs to be examined is your relationship with food. Because food is not just there for nourishment, unfortunately. We abuse food because, one reason is because they put addictive properties in our food. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine and they put an immense amount of sugar in every fucking thing we consume so that you are addicted to it, so that it fucks up with your emotional regularity, so that your nervous system, so that your endocrine system, so your hormones are disrupted. And the list goes on and on and on, okay? So, ugh, just talking about this, it's like, bro, you could just go on for days. This shit is like, they just want to fuck you up every fucking way they can. They want to fuck you up with the fluoride, water, with mercury, and antibiotics, and heavy metals. They just want to fuck you up every which way. So you better take your power back. This is a way to take your power back and live a healthier life. So then... Around, I would say springtime of this year. So it, it, you know, it's still relatively new, but I feel like very grounded in it. Is I transition into being plant based to alkaline plant based or alkaline vegan, and this way of life. It was adopted by Dr. Sabi and his wife, who he accredits most of his healing to. And what alkaline, well first let me get into who Dr. Sabi was. Dr. Sabi was a masterful healer from Honduras. 
and he came to New York and he was putting in the newspaper that he can cure any dis, dis ease cancer, HIV, blindness, um, the list goes on and on and on and on. The attorney general said, we're taking you to court because you're lying, these things are not curable. Now, the U.S. has the patent for these cures. So are they going to say that anyone else has it? No. And especially, are they going to say a black man without a paid credential from a Western institution has it? Fuck no. They are going to do anything to deface his character because they're going to do that to anyone that tries to bring this level of healing to the collective, but they're going to do it 10 times harder to a black or brown person. And then they're going to go even harder if that person was not educated from a Western institution. If you don't agree with that, then that means you need to do your own research. That is plain inside. That that that's that there. That's not opinion. Okay, this is fact. Compare any white healer with a black or brown one. They did not have the same treatment. So they took him to court. They said you need to bring one person from each ailment that you say that you cured. He brought 77 people because he had cured thousands of people. He brought 77 people with all of their documentation showing their, their biomarkers and their complete um, physiology before their curing and after. He won that court case and showed and proved to the court that these things are curable. Look it up. But your doctor is still telling you that it's not fucking curable. Why? Because your doctor makes money off of your sickness. Your doctor makes money off of prescribing you medication. So are they even, and another thing is, are you even taught nutrition in medical school? No. So if I'm telling you that food is the root of every dis-ease, but some of the smartest minds, the most educated minds, are not learning about food, make that make sense. It don't. And the reason why I get so fired up is because people are living in so much pain. We know almost everyone that watches this podcast knows at least one person that's died of cancer. We know someone that is affected in a negative way from this shit that they give us on a daily basis. So you should be infuriated. We should be taking back our power. We deserve to live the most healthy life. Period. And I'm going to just keep repeating that through the whole motherfucking episode. Because you deserve it. So, that's who Dr. Sadie is. Um, what is Alkaline Vegan? Alkaline Vegan consists of having a gallon of spring water a day, which I don't have a gallon. That's a lot for me, to be honest. You know, I think it also kind of depends a little bit on your size. You know, for me, that's just a lot. But you definitely want to be drinking an abundance of clean water. Check out your water supply. If you're drinking water from bottle water, water bottle watered companies like Dasani, like Essentia, like all, they put all this junk in their water, okay? Do your own research. So a gallon of spring water a day, no alcohol, and no hybrid foods. This is a big one, okay? Hybrid foods are foods that were cross-pollinated either in a lab or by a farmer 
with two or more fruits or veggies. So for example, broccoli was not God made. It was not naturally occurring on this earth. It is man-made. They put together two or more veggies and said, here's broccoli. Now, why is that bad for you? Because, let's go to the first word, alkaline vegan. Alkaline refers to the pH level. Your pH levels vary in your... So I was touching on pH levels. So you have different pH levels in your body. You have a different pH level in your blood, in your vagina, all over. So what we're trying to do is put the body in an alkaline environment. Because and an alkaline environment is a level of, of um, pH level of 7 or above. Because when your body is not in an alkaline state, it's in an acidic state. When it's in an acidic state, that's where dis-ease is manifested. Your body cannot manifest dis-ease in an alkaline state. So let me just keep going. So no hybrid foods, obviously no animal products, no dairy, no meat, nothing like that. Um, no soy, no microwaves. Um, I would say that's, that's the majority of it. And then another thing too is implementing fasts and detoxes, um, and I'll get to that later. But, you know, the main teachings that he was very, um, Forget that. I don't know which word I was going for. The main teachings that he talked a lot about were that if you eat mucus forming foods, such as hybrids, such as animal products, this mucus, this excess mucus that is formed, creates inflammation in the body. So when you have inflammation, your cells are not able to receive all the oxygen that they need. So they're not able to properly maneuver and do that function that they're intended to do. When they're not in, when that happens, then you have all these symptoms that we call dis-ease. Oh, there's so many different diseases out there. There's cancer, and there's autism, and there's this, and there's that. No, there's not. There's you putting things in your vessel that are not going to assimilate in your body, and your body is reacting with all of these symptoms. It's a symptom of what you've been ingesting. And another thing I want to touch on with hybrid foods that's so important to know is like, let's go back to broccoli. Every plant, every living thing has DNA, okay? These flowers have DNA, the, this plant has, every living thing has DNA. So, if the DNA of your broccoli has been genetically modified and is synthetic, and I have DNA, if I ingest that broccoli, that DNA is not going to assimilate to my DNA. So not only am I not getting proper nutrients because it's a fake thing, it actually depletes your nutrients over time. Now this is a lot to take in. I realize this. When you first start telling people and when I first started hearing, Broccoli isn't real. What? Carrots aren't real. What? All this shit. What? You have to get to, okay, so why are they doing that? Because like I said, there's a reason behind everything. The reason they do that is because it yields crops at a faster rate, number one, and it also produces crops that are more aesthetically pleasing. In nature, nothing is perfect all the time. You might have a peach that looks beautiful, and then you might have one that has a nice little dent on it. And then you might have one that has a little nick here. That's normal. That's nature. But most people are obsessed with things looking a certain way. 
So it satisfies our desire for it to look a certain way and it satisfies their desire to make more money at a faster rate. So why wouldn't they give you fake things? They're literally in labs right now growing fake meat because it's healthier, because there's no animals involved. So we're not murdering any spirits. You're not ingesting all these things that aren't good for you. You're like, you know, meat isn't good for you, so we're making it healthier. We're going to make it in a lab. Huh? I don't eat nothing that's man-made. Mother Nature is abundant. There are over 200,000 edible plants. And I'm going to eat something in a fucking lab? Like, we really got to look at this shit. Like, we have been programmed through movies, through all of these different methods to make it seem normal. But the technology is so good, you know, and it's going to help. It's going to help because the environment and, you know, with, with, with factory farming and what? Yes, we should be talking about the environment. We should be talking about factory farming. We should be talking about the state of the animal, that how it was murdered when you ingest it. But I'm not going to talk about my health, too. Like eating a lab-grown thing is better. It still sucks. There is still no nutrients. It is still synthetic. You feel me? Okay. Now I want to segue into all the different effects because this could be a whole video on itself of all the symptoms that we have normalized because of the food. Food affects every single thing. It affects your mood, your emotions, your thoughts, your mental clarity, your libido, your daily functionability, your physical appearance, your level of awareness, your cravings, your sensitivity, everything. Everything. So a lot of people come to me well, you know, that's just like a hobby of yours. Like you're just really passionate about food, you know, and that's just, I'm just not there right now. What? I'm pat, I, like, it, like it, it's like, what? Uh, we're, we're not talking about a fucking card game. We're not talking about a genre of music. We're talking about vitality. We're talking about your daily emotional regulation. We're talking about your daily elimination. We're talking about life. We're talking about living a life that you're not full of all of these symptoms. This is not a fucking passion. This is a way to live by. This is a motherfucking lifestyle. I don't do this for fun. Is it fun for me? Yes, it is. I love to cook. I love to create in the kitchen. Yes, it is an extension. One of the extensions is fun. But you feel what I'm saying? This is not something to just be like, oh, that's their thing. That's their thing. This is not a fucking business idea. This is my life. This is my fucking health, bro. This is my mental sanity. You think that anxiety and depression and schizophrenia and bipolar just came up out of nowhere because you have... um a chemical imbalance, where did that chemical imbalance come from? Don't say it came from your family. Genetics accounts for 10%, 10, 10% of your body. So what is the other 90? Lifestyle. And if you say something like, well, this runs in my, why does high blood pressure run in my family then? Do bad eating habits run in your family? Say that then. Say that. Say the cultural foods that you are tied to give you nothing but death. Give you nothing but constipation and bloating. Give you nothing but emotional deregulation because of the hormones that they put in the meat. So when people say that food is just like this, like, 
objective type thing. It's like, bro, you are so naive to the ways that it affects your whole universe. You have a whole universe inside of you. You are a divine being. Do you know how amazing and adaptable our vessels are? It is extraordinary. We are extraordinary creatures. If we are extraordinary creatures, why do we keep stuffing ourselves with death? Act like it. Act like you're an extraordinary being. Put those living foods inside of you. And I promise you, you will feel like a completely new person. Completely. Yes, you will lose weight. That's nothing. The way that you will be able to have much clearer thoughts, the way that you're able to understand your emotions now and why things come up. Were you sad or were you ingesting the hormones from that food-like item? Are you depressed? Or are you not aware of the emotional state that that animal was in when it was murdered? Because energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. Emotion is energy harbored in the body. Animals have the same level of emotion, or let me not say the same level, because it depends on what animal we're talking about. But all animals have emotions. So that cute little pig, that cow, that whatever, is not naive to what the fuck is going on in those slaughterhouses. So if they die with a scared or sad or angry emotion in them, uh, that energy, where do you think it goes when you eat that shit? Do you think it just goes nowhere? No, it manifests as anxiety. It manifests as all these diseases that they say are out there. No, these are just symptoms of what you're doing. Period. Okay? And the next thing I want to get into is detoxing and fasting. Because if maybe you're listening to this and you're like, you know what? I've been eating a ton of processed food. I haven't been checking the back of the ingredient list. I've been eating animal products. I still have dairy milk. I want to change some things. I applaud you. For real. Because a majority of people don't want to hear this shit. They want to stay in this level of cognitive dissonance. They want to push it away and pretend like it doesn't affect them, like it won't affect their offspring that are currently living in them. So if you have any sort of inclination to improve your health right now, kudos to you. Because once you change yourself, that is the first step to changing the collective. That is the first step to healing the collective, is you. So detoxing is the act of releasing these toxins that have been stored in our body for years. Okay, I was eating meat and dairy and coffee, which is full of caffeine, which deregulates our nervous system, which fucks up our hormones, which fucks up our skin, which fucks up our mood. I was eating like that for 17 years. Okay, you can't expect to think that eating right for a month is going to reverse that. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Now you have the full ability to fully heal your body, no matter what is going on. But you need to understand that it takes time, it takes discipline, and it takes love. So you need to take your time with this, okay? This is a lifestyle change. This is not a quick fix, this is not a fad, this is not a flat stomach tea. This is not a waist trainer. This is real. So you can detox through herbs. You can detox through um, 
all really anything you know i'm not even there we're gonna have a whole separate episode on detoxing and fasting so i'm not even gonna get into it too deep but you can detox too fast so keep that in mind that everything is a process we're not trying to rush we're trying to get our ba- our body back in a balanced state of homeostasis if you keep going like this it's your body's gonna be like what the fuck is going on and it will show and you will feel out of whack okay another thing is fasting. Fasting is one of the most underutilized tools of medicine. You can fast with just water and a fast means you're not consuming food. Okay, so fat, you could fast through herbal teas, through water, through um, juice, um, like fruit juices, homemade. Don't buy a fucking Tropicana and say you're doing a juice cleanse. No. You're, there's animal products in Tropicana. There's an abundance of sugar. It takes nothing to go get some organic oranges, squeeze them, there you go. Literally, okay? So fasting, is, it creates all of this energy that was used because digestion takes a lot of your body's energy. So if you're constantly shoving your face with food and eating three meals a day like how they teach you, No wonder you're so lethargic. No wonder you just want to sit on the couch after you eat. That is not normal. You should feel full of life after you eat. You should not want to go sit on the couch. Your body is communicating with you. Are you listening? So once you get rid of all of that energy needed to digest, now your body can fully take all of its energy and put it into whatever needs to be healed. And one thing I've been learning through Yaki Awakened, who is a, I, I like, he, he is just an abundance of knowledge. He's like, I feel like every time I listen to him, it's like, you, it's like going through all these books. He is just, and if you listen to his story, it's even more incredible because he all, he's on Instagram, he's on YouTube, he has a website. Um, he was addicted to cocaine. He lived a very unhealthy life and he completely transformed his life. He, his first teacher was Dr. Sebi. Um, and although they have different methods of healing, that's something to remember too, is I don't go 100% off Dr. Sebi. He's, pri- he's my, primary, my primary resource, yes, for my lifestyle, but I incorporate different things once I learn about it and I fully take in those benefits. So I take in Dr. Sebi, I, t- I take in Yaki, but um, yeah, Yaki, you know, I was watching an interview and he was just saying he completely healed himself. Uh, he had diabetes, he, you know, all these things. And now he helps heal an, ab- an abundance of people. He helps heal athletes. He helps pe- heal anyone. And um, I don't remember what my point was about, oh, that he, he introduced me to mono juice fasting. Mono meaning one, how focusing just on one fruit for that juice cleanse is more beneficial than adding in all these different fruits. And that's something that is, you know, talked about too, like, well, you need to get all these different minerals. So we just got to put in all these things. Our bodies are simple cell organisms. They want simple. When you eat a meal that is more simple, meaning it doesn't have all these different types of food groups in it, it's much easier for our body to digest. Um, I already talked about the red dye, um, that it's you know FDA approved, because a lot of people wanna say things like, well, it's FDA approved. Well, the government has a commercial on it. Well, this, well, that. Okay, if you're someone that says that, then you obviously don't understand why the FDA was created, how they make money, and blah de blah de blah. And honestly, that's not something I'm interested in going into. That's something that you probably need to look into yourself if you are um, not aware yet. Um, I also want to say that this information that I'm saying took me a long time to gather to sort through, to fully understand, and then to apply it, and then to feel the benefits of that. They make this purposely hard to find. They make it purposely hard to understand. Why would they tell you that changing your livid 
is going to completely block you from having dis-ease. Why would they tell you that? Do you know how much money they make off the healthcare system alone? So if you say something like, well, I went on Google, Jesse, and I can't find it. Well, no shit. Who is Google owned by? Who is Google friends with? These are things that have to come from reputable authors from books. It needs to come from your own intuitive knowledge. It can come from your ancestors if they're in tune with Mother Nature. But it is hard to find and you have to just be patient. You have to sort through all the bullshit to get to those um, helpful and true people or books or whatever it is. And also another thing is finding great Instagram accounts. Um, that's been helpful for me too. Um, but a lot of times we look at this as like a negative, like, damn, now I have to change all this food. Now I can't eat this. Now this. If you choose that perspective, then that's how you'll feel. You will feel lack. You might feel sad about it. You might be down. Or you can choose the perspective of, wow, now I don't have to feel all these symptoms that I thought were normal. Wow, now I can get super creative in the kitchen. Wow, now I can learn about all these um, fruits and vegetables and these beautiful plants that were placed here specifically for me. So if you're on this side of the spectrum, that's your choice. Your perspective is a choice. If you're still holding on to foods, that's a choice. And I ask, I, I, I would invite this, this time to ask yourself why you're holding on to these foods. Because one very probable answer is you have a parasite in you. Parasites are very common. Tapeworms, all this shit that is in here because of the years and years and years of dis-ease that we have been ingesting. Parasites can literally control your cravings. Literally. So unless you pass those through detoxing, through fasting, through changing your diet, through changing your mindset around food, then those things will continue to control you. Whether it be a parasite, whether it be the FDA, whether it be this fucking food pyramid, whether it be your fucking doctor telling you that you need iron from meat. Stop it. Stop it. Okay? I want to end with asking some questions that I think are important that maybe you might find helpful to learn more about your connection with food. Okay, am I prioritizing convenience over my health? That can mean going out and buying food out too much. That can mean using the microwave. That can mean buying a lot of frozen food. Whatever that means for you, explore that. Am I spiritually connected to my nourishment? Now, in the case of dead animals, am I aware of the state of that animal when it was murdered? Because majority of us would not be okay with me pulling out a chicken right now and slicing its head off and taking its feathers off and cutting it into pieces and then cooking it and eating it. But we're okay with practicing cognitive dissonance and buying it from the store where we don't have to think about that. So right there, you are displaying a disconnection to the spiritual. Now on the flip side, if we're eating primarily whole, whole fruits and vegetables and plants, then like I said, they're living. Are we connected? Are we saying our thank you to Mother Nature for all of the specific and amazing properties that she puts in our food? Because nothing in nature is isolated. You don't eat an orange and it only gives you vitamin C. It gives you vitamin C. It gives you potassium. It gives you this, 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 this. That's what she did to us. She gave us 
Look at how much love she poured into our food. You won't ever have to go without. That's, that's what I picture her saying if she was a person. You won't ever have to go without, baby. Everything I put here is abundant. Everything I put here has multiple benefits. That was on purpose. And another thing, too, is that the sun, however long it's been here, however many millions of years, has collected all of this information. All of this information is beaming down on our seeds, growing our fruits and vegetables and, you know, our, our whole plants, our whole foods. is beaming down all of this information. It is beaming down carbon into our foods. That is a very powerful thing. And when you understand all the information that the sun is giving to our nourishment, which we are ingesting, our food is information for our body. It is not there just for taste. Your taste buds are not your God. That's an ode to Tamu. I'm going to link his stuff down below. Your taste buds are not your God. Period. And last thing is, you know, I touch on, okay, animals in terms of spirituality, the living plants. Also, your intuitive eating. Are you monitoring your feelings and the way, the state of your body after you consume something? Because if you consume something and you get bloated, your body is directly communicating with you. They're saying, I am literally to the point of swelling. I'm so uncomfortable. Are you listening? So I say all of this because especially, especially for black and brown people, their birthright of learning about food, about nature, about agriculture has been completely stolen. Completely. Now, if you're white, has it been stolen too? Yes, but to the same extent, not at all. Black farmers, majority of black farmers have had their farms stolen. Majority of black and brown areas are in food deserts. So this is not an equal playing field. And that's a conversation for another day that we're going to get into. Reclaim your birthright by connecting with your nourishment. By connecting with the divine. Because all of these gifts that they put in front of us so that we can live and move exactly how we need to were put there for divine reasons. You deserve that. I deserve that. We collectively deserve to be healthy. Period. So I know this was a lot of information, but it's it's needed. It it needs to be said. It needs to be understood. If you have questions, please link. Um, I mean, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything about alkaline vegan, Dr. Sabi. You know, my own transformation of how I feel now, um, being that you know I've been consistent with this. But all of this is rooted in self-love. So be mindful of what you consume today. And I wish everyone a day full of vitality and love. And I will see you next time.